All right, everyone. Welcome to this MarkForge webinar on 3D printing soft jaws. My name is Daniel Leon. I'm a content engineer here. I'm joined by Marco Modecki, who's a marketing specialist, and will be helping us with answering questions later on. First, let's get to the agenda of what we'll be talking about today. I'll start by giving you a MarkForge introduction, what we do, why we do it, and how we've implemented our solutions thus far. I'll introduce soft jaws to you, explain the value of MarkForge soft jaws, then show you some implementation examples of MarkForge soft jaws, and last, open up the floor to questions. So first, a little bit about MarkForge. MarkForge was founded four years ago out of MIT. Our employees are comprised of a lot of MIT people, some people from Bell Labs, Sonos, Enernoc, Olin College, Twilio, and Cisco Meraki. We're a little over 100 employees now, and we're headquartered in Boston, Massachusetts. We shipped our first printer three years ago, the Mark I. Since then, we've shipped six or seven more products. We've achieved 300% year-over-year growth in the last 12 months, and we achieved profitability in quarter one of this year. We're looking to grow explosively and continue moving our products around the globe. So where are we today? We've shipped thousands of machines to six continents all around the globe. Our users use our machines for high-quality parts in a wide variety of applications, whether it be prototyping, tooling, and fixtures, where we're best, or end use parts, and our customers range from the tiniest machine shops to the largest companies in the world. We're all supported by our wide network of value-added resellers who provide support, maintenance, and on-site training to you, the customers, as you get your first machines. Among these customers are industry leaders across all verticals, whether it be aerospace, automotive, consumer products, or footwear and orthotics, standard manufacturing, or even education. All of these large logos that are on this page use our machines to create great parts for great applications. So in the end, what we're doing is we're empowering engineers to unlock the next 10x innovation in design and manufacturing. So now let's talk a little bit about soft jaws. To understand soft jaws, you have to understand standard work holding. For a lathe, this often means a three jaw chuck or a collet. These two types of work holding methods hold parts very precisely and concentrically so that machining operations can be performed on them. For a mill, you're often talking about a very precise vise that's bolted down to the milling table and holds a part securely while an end mill or some other machining tool performs operations on the part that subtract material. Both of these are standard. They're used for a majority of operations, but they can't be used for everything. So that's where soft jaws come in. On the lathe, soft jaws are used for a wide variety of purposes, whether it be holding very interestingly shaped parts concentrically, or in this case, creating a non-marring aluminum fixture so that they can hold a large steel part to be machined on another side. One thing about three jaw chucks is because they have large teeth on them, they tend to mar the parts pretty severely. So if you're looking for a nicer finish, you can't really use them. On this mill over here, we have a part that's being held by a custom soft jaw, so it can be machined in a new and novel orientation. So often parts are too small or too weirdly shaped to be properly machined, and that's where soft jaws come into play. Now soft jaws are critical to many, many manufacturing processes, uh, but why would you 3D print them? As it turns out, while soft jaws are incredibly useful, they often, often also cause a great deal of pain in the manufacturing process. The first way is with machining time. Now soft jaws are just another CNC part, uh, they must be designed, programmed, and cam and machined just like any other part that you would be making for an end use. The thing about that is that since they aren't end use parts and they'll never see the light of day outside your shop, they have no implicit value in contributing to your bottom line. So that means that these soft jaws, while helping the manufacturer, don't contribute to your bottom line and take up valuable time in your CNC machines. With 3D printing, there's still some design required in the process, but it's less than machine soft jaws because General CAD operations are much kinder when you're not having to design for a mill or a lathe or a CNC process. The printing time takes longer than machining, but it's all hands-off time. While machining takes time to program and machine that's hands-on, where you need someone working on it, the printer you can just leave in the corner of the room and have it pump out a part for you, which in turn results in no machine downtime. You can design these parts, set them to print, and continue manufacturing on your CNC machine without any lapses, and then when you need when they're done, you can bolt them onto your machine and continue working. Now this time works pretty closely with machining cost. So soft jaws are a fixed cost per part because they're CNC 
and they generally require a lot of machining time related costs because the most significant contributor to machining costs is the amount of time it takes. Now, for a small run of end use parts made by a soft jaw, creating soft jaws might be prohibitively expensive because it might add up to 2x the, t the cost of the actual part. Now, with a larger run part, you might not have as much of a cost incentive, but the tooling is still generally pretty expensive just based on the amount of cost it takes to run a CNC machine as opposed to a 3D printer. Now with these 3D printers, there's no implicit machine uptime cost because you're just setting a, an automatic machine to perform an automatic process. It tends to end up being an order of magnitude cheaper than machining in many use cases because of this, where our, the cost for a 3D printed soft jaw is only the cost of the material, whereas the cost for a machined one is the cost of the material, which is not insignificant as well as the cost for the actual machining. Now, the reason that Mark Forge is special is that when push comes to shove, most 3D printing plastics are not robust enough to print soft jaws. The first way they're not generally robust enough is they're not stiff or strong enough. 3D printing plastics as a whole are not particularly stiff, and because you're clamping metal parts to be machined by other harder metal, metal tools, these parts need to be very hard and, or very stiff and very tough, so that when you exert, exert a significant clamping force on them, they still will not bend, will not yield, and will not break, which could sacrifice both the part itself or the accuracy of the part. Uh, with MarkForge, you have composite reinforcement. So on the right here, we see continuous fiberglass reinforcement, reinforcement inside this software screenshot, and it's stiff enough to withstand machining forces. The next thing is that these parts need to be chemically resistant. Most printing plastics are not particularly resistant to chemicals because of what they're based on, and cutting fluids, which are a particularly nasty chemical, tend to dissolve these fixtures, which means that as a machining process goes on, the fixture becomes less and less effective until it's no longer functional at all. Since MarkForge has nylon-based thermoplastic, it stands up to these harsh chemicals, including cutting fluids, which means you can put them in your most intense CNC machine, and so long as the soft jaw itself doesn't get milled, it'll stand up just fine. The last thing is that soft must be non-marring. Now this is not something that's particularly unique to MarkForge in the plastic realm, but because our parts are plastic on the are thermoplastic on the outside, they're non-marring, unlike other 3D printed parts that could be soft jaws, which would mostly be in the metal area. So we have a rare combination of being plastic, which means we're non-marring, and robust enough that you can actually use our parts as soft jaws. So now let's go into a few quick implementation examples where we present a problem and how you can solve that type of problem with the MarkForge soft jaw. So the first type of problem we're going to look at is a complex CNC milled part. So this is a type of part that needs to be machined on multiple sides, held in weird orientations, uh, and has interesting features that need to be machined in special ways. Now normally these parts are either machined on a 5 or 6 axis CNC machine, which is very, very expensive, or they're done very, very carefully with machined soft jaws. In this case, what we're looking at is a motorcycle engine mount for a custom motorcycle rebuild. So how would you machine this part that has these very complex features? You would print a fixture for it. So in this case, this isn't a perfect soft jaw. It really is more something that bolts into a vise and then is screwed into a part. So it's still a work holding part that fits in a jaw. It's not quite a soft jaw. This part is clamped in the vise, is bolted onto this uh, custom aluminum part so that you can machine the second side. So uh, this is at the end of the machining operations, but generally what you do is you'd machine the flip side of it, then you'd bolt that part to the soft jaw and let the CNC do the other half of the part. Now, uh, that second face machining is really only possible with a MarkForge machiner with a soft jaw, and MarkForge makes the most cost-efficient soft jaw. So in this case, you're ending up saving a lot of money with that. Another interesting use case is boring complex parts. So boring is a very complex process. Uh, generally, it's either done on a mill or a lathe. If the part is concentric, it's generally done on a lathe because lathes are more precise because you're actually spinning the part as opposed to simulating motion with a CNC motor, and because it's a lot easier because you can set the diameter more precisely. You can bore parts on CNC mills, but the process is usually involved in careful work holding, then doing a lot of very careful indexing, setting a boring tool to be very precise diameter, and then doing the actual bore. So it's multi-step and it takes a ton of time. Now with lathe boring, it's more efficient, but the problem with most lathe parts is that you can't actually hold a non-concentric part like this turbine housing here. 
Now, if you wanted to hold the non-concentric part, you could do two things. You could either machine a soft jaw, or you could use what are called four jaw chucks, where you have four jaws that are independently actuated. The process of using these is very, very complex because you have to actuate each jaw individually to perfectly center a part. And again, just like you would have to do with a mill, you have to do very careful centering so that you're actually at center when you're doing your machining. Now, the third solution that I didn't say is you could print your own soft jaws. So here what we see is a solution where we printed three custom soft jaws for this part, put it in a mill and spun it up, and it worked perfectly. So now it's allowed, now what you can do is instead of unbolting your three-jaw chuck, putting a four-jaw chuck on and then doing all that alignment or machining your own soft jaws, you can just put them on the printer, forget about them, and then bolt them right onto your machine and have them work. Now, right now I'm going to show a really quick video of the part actually spinning up. It's pretty cool. All right, cool. So let's talk about our last use case now. Uh, in this case, we're going to be post-machining COTS parts. So consumer off-the-shelf parts are often much more affordable and they're a better option when you're designing a product. The problem is that most consumer off-the-shop parts don't fit perfectly into assemblies or you have to do some changing of your assembly to actually fit them in. So in this case, uh, modifying them allows you more design freedom but is often a pain because these parts have complex, weird, intricate features like the sprocket here that make it really hard to hold in a mill. So let's say we wanted to mill pockets into this, this sprocket to make it lighter. Well, what we have to do is hold it in an interesting way. That way can be a Mark Forge soft jaw. So you can see here, these soft jaws here are bolted into a mill vise holding the sprocket. Another interesting feature of these is that you actually put your part number into them, so it's really easy to diagnose which soft jaws you have, and so that when you have a fixtures drawer and you're next to your mill, you can really easily figure out which parts you need if you're producing more than one at different times, and you can reuse these parts rather easily. Now in this case, the sprockets hold very securely, so you could perform any milling operation you want on the front. All right, so that's all we have today. Now I'm going to open up the floor to questions. Uh, just a heads up, we probably won't get to every question, but we will send out a response to every question that's asked via email after the webinar. Thank you very much for listening.